Hello guys and thank you for watching fpvguide.com. Um, today I have a box with me that I got from Mike at fpvspyplane.com, I believe. And it is the new Q, sorry, X4 from Hobson. Until now, as far as I'm concerned, the benchmark for micro quads have really been the Ladybird. And the Ladybird has an option that gives you FPV. It's a little clip-on job, but it's a great little device because you can change the lens and put a fisheye lens in it. So it's a good little system and they have a modular radio system, the F4 and the F7. Flip up the window and here's your video. So that is their system ready to go. I like it, it functions well. There's things I don't like and Today, we're going to see Hubsense entry into the micro FPV market. So let's crack this open. We have two boxes and then I find that really cool because you can buy the radio separately from the aircraft. So here's the aircraft. The box looks like this, has the little aircraft. Probably it's better if I turn it around. And there the Hubsense. Hubson Micro FPV Aircraft. It's a beautiful little thing, isn't it? Let's crack it open and see what we find in here. All right, here is... Okay, here's an explanation how the video works on... They have a special video system. So here's an explanation. I'm sure they got a lot of questions since they put this in the box. In the box here came out a prop guard. Prop guards are great, especially if you're learning how to fly, because this is going to keep your propellers lasting a lot longer, and it's also going to keep you from whacking yourself with the props if you run into yourself. So I like the prop guard. That's a cool little thing. I'm sure it also slows down the speed. That can also be good if you're new at this. Here's the kit. Yes, things slide around a little bit. Inside here is some spare propellers, a charger, and a battery. So let's crack it open. And there it is. That thing is gorgeous. I mean, seriously, look at this. Isn't that just a beautiful little aircraft? And here's the business end, of course. A teeny little camera right there. Can you see it in there? I can tell you right now there's something I don't like here. This camera lens is so small that I cannot put a fisheye wide-angle lens in here. When you fly you're gonna want wide angle. So unless this thing shows turns out to have actual wide angle, I don't like it that much. <laughs> the lens, however I like the rest and I'm sure we'll find a way to put a wide angle on it. Here's the battery. It is a single cell 350, 380 milliamp. So let's put that in here and see if that's power on it. And that plugs in here. Woohoo! There's power. Let's get the remote. So we already looked at. Oh, here's another thing before we get to the remote. Here's a charger goes into the USB port and plugs into your battery right here. Nothing much to it. I don't know why they put all these cables on them as far as I'm concerned. This could be one piece and there would be less mess. But that's just my opinion. Oh, there's another thing here. It's kind of cool. It's a pry bar. Here you go. You can stick it underneath the propeller and you can pull the propeller out. Sometimes these propellers can be really hard to get off. So it's a nifty little tool and I'm sure, fortunately, that you'll break a prop. You will break a prop and you'll be using this. Let me put this away for a second. We're done with that. We can throw this over here. And let's get this out of the box. Where does that open? Now, I love this thing. One of the things when I first saw pictures of this, I really love the remote. Oops, and here is an instruction manual. Manuals is a good thing. Right there. So we'll read that later if we can't figure things out. In the meantime, we're assuming we can figure things out. This comes pretty well protected. And 
here is the remote. Look at that. It's just like aerodynamic. It is beautiful. Isn't that just a gorgeous remote? Okay, up here is a mini SD slot. And right next to it is a USB slot. And here we have the usual subjects or suspects. Trim right, left, up, down, yaw, and throttle trim. On the other side, there's two mini jacks. I'm gonna make a wild guess and say the one is video out and the other one is audio out. So we have USB plug, which means that this can be seen plugged in and you can probably see the media from your laptop. It has the mini SD card, so you can plug into that and, oh, batteries. There is only four batteries in this, that's not very much. I already got batteries, here's four energizers. Let's crack this open. I obviously could not start this without having batteries handy. Sometimes these are hard to get out. How do they go in? Right up here. The top ones are nose down. They kind of slide in under the handle here. I can tell you without even thinking about this, I wish there was six or eight batteries in here because this has a big screen and it's gonna be eating a lot of energy. There, it's in. And it's sliding. We're charged and we're hot. System initialize. Bind to plane. Uh, where's our plane? Do that. Find the plane. And we're turning this on. Black to black, red to red. And we're putting it down here. Let's get a launch pad. Okay, we've got that. Here's this. I still have the little thing attached, it's magnetic. And we have a camera view now. Here I am, seen from the helicopter. So this is working right out of the box. To get going with this, I also need a micro SD. The micro SD goes in on a little slot up here, and we are ready. Now to start recording, there's two immediate settings you want to keep in mind. The left button, you can see up here, says manual, now it says stable. Over here, it now says recording. So that was that easy. We just plugged it in, we clicked it on, and let's see if this works. Okay, stick has to go all the way down. And now it will, so it won't strike unless it's until the stick has been to the bottom. Okay, it's definitely a little drifty, but hey, what do you expect? It's not exactly like there's a lot of space here. And we landed safely. Houston, the Eagle has landed. Or rather, I love this thing. Let's stop the recording again. And now let's talk a little bit about the features here. The first feature, while this is still on, let's take a look at my Fat Shark goggles. This is a pair of attitudes, and I have replaced. Normally, I fly with this antenna here, which is a flat out circular polarized antenna, and I've replaced that with a dipole because we have a dipole right here on the back of this. So let me take a look. Okay, on this channel, I have video. So this is fabulous. I'm getting video, clean, nice video signal on my Fat Shark goggles with a dipole antenna. That's, by the way, is how Fat Sharks come. Right now they're beeping because this pair also has head tracking so that when you turn your head, 
it will the camera on the airplane will follow my goggles if I look up, down, right, and left. I'm obviously not able to use that with this one, but it's beeping to tell me that I just have been turning them around too much. Um, so this one, this beauty, little beauty, will work with my fat chart goggles. Now I know from a couple of people I've talked to that it will not work on all the channels. So to get it to work on all the channels, you may have to restart it a couple of times until you get clear video in the goggles. So that's a little FYI, but it will work. And that, as far as I'm concerned, is awesome if you can fly with these out of the box. So, oh, I should unplug these. Otherwise, I'll have an empty battery in the morning. And this one here we're done with. Let's get rid of that. And let's get to comparing. Because here is the two competitors. Notice how much smaller this is. It is a lot smaller. The little Hobson is very small. It's actually about 25% shorter than the Valkyra. It's actually heavier too, it feels like. It's probably not true. I haven't had it on scale yet. So personally this looks like right now compared to this the Valkyrie looks homemade here it is look at this I absolutely adore the look of this thing the only thing wrong with this design it should be black I mean seriously how can this not be black but that's maybe not a big problem let's compare and pull out the Valkyra video this is the Valkyra video system. They also have the dipole antenna. And these ones, I have frequently been modifying them to put one of these antennas that gives you much further range of the video. Somebody from Hobson emailed me and told me they tried these, but it didn't work very well. And so they went with the straight ones. To be honest with you, I don't believe that. Simply because, look how big this is. I just don't think they wanted that big of an antenna on this little aircraft. However, I'm sure some crafty people, and probably myself included, will be modding this antenna to this little body. We'll take off the shell up here so it gets lighter, and now you're gonna get better video. It will sit real nice right here in the middle somehow. You'll get a little more long distance video. That's because this here isn't really practical down here. See, this is the antenna right here. And normally an, an antenna should be going straight down just like we put the antenna on the goggle straight up so that the two antennas should be parallel to each other right the way this is right now it's one flat and one up that's not going to be really good and also it has less energy dispersed this way than this way so let's so this probably would work better if it was like that however how are you going to land there's a lot of compromises in making such a small aircraft with this many abilities so Let's move on. I can probably unplug this now. Now I'll just leave it. Radios. The Valkyra. And I should open this so you can see the screen. Here's the Valkyra with the screen, and here is the to the other to the left here you see the little more aerodynamic and I would say kind of prettier screen they're really the same they have four channels this here looks more like a traditional radio however it's also big and the biggest the best advantage of the Valkyra radio is it can fly a lot of different things you can fly the Houghton you can fly some of their coaxial aircraft with it but I'm sure you can with this one as well the benefits with this, the screen is almost twice as big as the Valkyra screen. It's an enormous screen. I do think if you're outside, you're gonna have a hard time seeing. And I notice already there's a couple of little holes here. I bet you that we will be offered a click on lens shade or hood that will come up like that. And if not, you can make one out of some black cardboard really quickly and that's gonna help you a lot. As for the ergonomics here, the weight is light, it feels light. It's much lighter than the Valkyra. The sticks are very comfortable. They're very 
they feel very smooth. But they're definitely, they're not like high-end bearings, but I mean, what do you expect for this kind of money also? For the money, this is a great little radio. What I do find here right now, it's a little hard. To, I'm a pincher. There's probably two types of radio users. There is the joystick generation, the video game generation often flies with their thumbs. And older folks like me tend to fly, a lot of us at least, fly pinch. I like to have two fingers on the stick. I don't know, I guess I'm afraid if I'm flying and it slips. This way here I have two and it's a little harder, but it's absolutely doable. So yeah, I'm feeling totally comfortable with this radio here. There's a little hole here, so you can probably put a yard, put a clip in here to get a connector. And that will just let you, if you want to hang it around your neck. I don't like my radios hanging around my neck because if they fall down, the sticks are going to hit my stomach. And all of a sudden my aircraft goes all over the place. I figure if I'm dropping it, I might as well drop it on the ground. It makes no difference. It's going to be a problem. So I like the radio. I love the design. And I want to say, and I brought for this reason, this, is, uh, this breaks with traditional design a lot. But that's not first time Hobson has done that. Last year they came out with their spy drone. And that had a very unusual radio as well. It had a built-in screen, but they went sideways like this. And they had the sticks out here. Those sticks, by the way, feels a little better. They probably ain't. This is a much heavier radio, but they also took they took it made a departure from traditional radio design and this turned out to be a very comfortable radio i've been flying fpv with it and i enjoy using it it's a cool little radio it looks really funky and it's not good for long distance so i mean but it just shows that hobson is not afraid of messing with tradition they're not afraid of looking of not looking like something else and this proves it and so this year they have now come on come out with a new radio that is also unlike the other. The Valkyria one is a compromise. The screen is down here in the bottom, so when you fly, your thumbs or your hands may cover it. On this one, the screen is up at top, where you, it's above your fingers, you can easily get to it. It's easy to see and it's easy to, and it's huge. It's huge, they have made a good design. They have not, they're not trying to make this the, a traditional radio be a video thing. They're made in video radio. Now there's one thing you need to know about this radio. Up on top is a directional antenna. I, probably a figure eight of sorts, but the antenna in this one for the video, the control flight is pretty much any direction, but for the video, which is 5.8G, it is directional. So you need to fly out this one. And if you get a bit to the side, and it starts getting slow, make sure you turn the radio to face wherever the aircraft is because facing the aircraft with the top of this is going to get you the best possible video. And of course, since I was mentioning I wanted to modify the aircraft, in order to use this antenna, I would probably also have to modify this and put a little aftermarket plug in. I think it would look pretty good with a little aftermarket plug right on the corner here and I could get a little antenna and get some longer distance. So having said that, let me put this away. Um, well, it's too early, really. There's one thing left to say. This little video out over here, right there, that is an important feature because it means that you don't have to buy fat sharks. I got this pair, and they came with this MyView case. That is a pretty ancient pair of video goggles. But it's actually cool because the video goggle sits down at the bottom and up at top, there's no goggle. So you can put them on. And of course, I look funky like this, but here I can see out through it. And when I look down, I can see the goggle. So this is really kind of a clever concept if you want to fly because you can see the aircraft coming in, landing with your eyes. And at the same time, you can also see the video from the aircraft. And particularly with a little one like this that doesn't have a very good video camera, it's a narrow angle, you're probably going to want to use the video mostly to line up shots and kind of steer that way. But here's the, I got these things for $50 from eBay. 
So a $50 pair of goggles can be attached to your radio and give you goggle flying with the beautiful little Hobson aircraft. Now looking at this, like I said before, there's a big problem here. This little video camera, the camera is fine, but it has video angle. When I looked at the screen, it looks like 90 degrees. 80 maybe, it's narrow, it's like a telefocus video and it's, politely speaking, freaking useless for FPV. Mike, I hope you hear me and Hobson, I hope you hear me. If you really want to fly small aircrafts indoor, you have to have a 120 degree field of vision in order to really be able to see what's going on. The reason is, when you have this tunnel vision sticking out like this, I'm trying to get my hands, I don't block the lens. When you stick out like this, if you move forward or backwards, you don't particularly see how fast you go. When you get the wide angle, then you start seeing details around you. And as soon as you move a little forward, backward, those details will move in your picture. So because of that, you must have some kind of wide angle. My first test is gonna be with this little baby here. It is a little magnetic fisheye lens for my iPhone. And I'll probably super glue a magnetic metal ring right here and it can go click. And it's gonna look like a monster eye, but that would probably give me another, maybe up to 100 degree, 10 degrees, maybe 110 degree field of view so I can see something. You have to be able to see something to fly. And Hobson, I really want to see an updated version of this with a better fisheye lens in the front. No excuses. Having said that, let's turn, this is getting warm. I should turn it off. And let's go back and talk about the video here. We were recording video to this little SD card. They are doing something unique in this system and in this camera. Normally you get 640 by 480 video for FPV. That's what you can stream because these little devices here, which what, regardless how much you pay for them, they're basically little radio television stations. They send out video and these things can handle standard definition. Standard definition is 0 0.3 megapixel. It's not a whole lot, but the guys from Hobson have gone a different direction. They have put, they have made the camera do 720 by 240 and guess what that is 0 0.2 megapixels so it's actually a little bit less resolution but and that means when you're flying it's not going to drop out as quickly because it's already a low resolution but the funny thing is when so it comes in here and it's this long picture and skinny once you reformat it to get the right, right height which is this format here which is like widescreen TV, then you get a picture you can actually see. And the 720 dots across, even though they have been stretched upwards, looks very sharp. And I have to say, the video I've seen from these looks sharper than 640 by 480 video from this camera. So it's, it's an optical trick, but it's an interesting choice because it, they got widescreen TV it says HD, I'm sorry, there is no HD here, so don't let them fool you. But it gives an interesting effect, and it certainly is worthwhile. I think they have made a good choice. I can't wait to see how this sells, and I also can't wait to see more different varieties of this. The fact that they managed to be compatible, at least somewhat with my FPV goggles, is phenomenal. I think this is gonna be a great trainer this is a great way to break in to get the feeling for FPV before you put a $500 aircraft up in the air. And this entire thing, they're inexpensive. Check them out online and also subscribe to my channel. I've got a new helicopter coming in here in a couple of weeks, which is GPS supported. So the helicopter can hit hold and hoover and return to home which normally you can't do with a helicopter. So subscribe and also bookmark my website at fpvguide.com. Thank you very much.